Welcome to Riley's Gardening Adventures. When it comes to gardening, you may have stumbled upon the words mycorrhizal fungi. So what is mycorrhizal fungi? Well, mycorrhizal fungi is what I like to call steroids for roots. I call it this because mycorrhizal fungi is a beneficial fungus that binds with plant roots and creates a stronger network to uptake nutrients for the plant in exchange for sugars. When it comes to seed starting tomatoes, we want strong, healthy transplants. So I ask the questions, what would mycorrhizal fungi do? How would it compare to seedlings with fertilizer? How would it compare with both or neither? So I googled the internet for an answer, and this is what I found. A video that didn't give comparisons, and another that never followed up. What was close to answering my questions was a video from Groasis Vegetables, but only both used half-strength fertilizer. Nothing answered my questions. I said, fine, I'll do it myself. What I have here is Mycos from Extreme Gardening, one of the many different companies you can acquire mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, what made me choose this for this experiment is because it is a singular strain of mycorrhizal fungi. So other companies probably put like two, three different types of strains. Um, this one advertised as one so that there will be less competition when the roots and the fungus make contact forming that uh, beneficial bond. So I was like reading it and I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll try this one out because it's only one and it will have the most extreme results. Not sponsored. Now, welcome to the gross setup. The four categories that we have today are mycorrhizal fungi, mycorrhizal fungi with fertilizer, fertilizer alone, and control, which uh, means nothing else. The purpose of the experiment is to find out which produces the best seedling out of all these four categories. And the variety of tomatoes that I'm testing this with is the Solar Flare Tomato from Baker's Creek Heirloom Seeds, which you probably recognize from my heirloom tasting video. And I use this variety because I've used the seeds with great success. So I know these seeds aren't a dud. I put uh, six seeds per cell and the strongest seed will be the one that will grow for each category and be representative. So we won't have any duds um, affecting the experiment. I would like to inform that these two categories do not have their fertilizer added yet until they show signs of two sets of true leaves because that's when tomatoes start to actually need nutrition and it wouldn't really have an effect to add the fertilizer now when they're still in a seedling stage. So after these plants are tall enough with the two sets of true leaves, I will transplant them into identical 4.2 inch cups from Burpee that I have recycled from bought plants from last year. And I'm going to pot them up in the soil and then add the fertilizer for the fertilizer categories and add the mycos alone for this category and nothing here for the control category. The soil that I'll be using for the experiment when I transplant them into these 4.2 inch pots will be the control soil that I used for the last experiment, which was heavily depleted soil. I also took the liberty to sterilize it with boiling water to kill any microbial life or organisms that be in the soil that could impact the results of the experiment. Uh, making sure that the control category right here is not affected and the mycos only category is not affected. Uh, the fertilizer, these two will be fertilizer with Osmocote. So why Osmocote? Well, Osmocote is my balanced fertilizer that I just bought a big supply of due to the performance in my Bloom Booster experiment. And this is just a balanced 14, 14, 14 MPK ratio. It has good results last year, did good results in the Bloom Booster experiment. So I think this would be a good balanced fertilizer to use for the two fertilizer categories. So. I would like to disclaim that I am not sponsored or affiliated by any of the brands or companies you see here today. Um, I chose all of these by my own personal choice and I just wanted to know what was the best for my seed starting for my tomato experience. So this is why I'm doing the experiment. Around February 28 or before, I will be posting the results of this experiment. Um, the four main categories that you will be seeing is stem thickness, plant height, growth speed, and the root ball. I'm going to be popping out each plant from the pots so you can see the root ball for yourself and uh, supplying a spreadsheet of all the data so you will know which category had the best performance for seed starting and whether or not that if you want to use any of these products in your own seed starting adventure just in time before it hits March, which is the usual seed starting season for tomatoes. So, Stay tuned for more adventures on Riley's Gardening Adventures.